So welcome everyone. Uh, tonight we're going to speak about uh, technical indicators. Uh, maybe we can make a quick resume of uh, what we have uh, said last week. So last week we studied how movements are working. So we have seen that there is and there are a uh, trading range. So it's uh, no trend movement. So they look like squares or they look like triangle. And you have a uh, trend. So they look like a uh, channel. And actually, we ask you uh, to train yourself, so to open a, a trading chart and to try to spot square, triangle, and channel uh, just with your eyes. And the tools that we're going to study tonight, it's tools that can help you to recognize e in an easier way square formation, triangle formation, but also channel and trend and so on and so on. So it's very important to understand that an indicator doesn't show the future. A lot of time when uh, people want to introduce to you what is an indicator, they tell you, hey, take a look, when the indicators become red, you have to sell, when it's becoming green, you have to buy. No, an indicator, it's only a mathematical uh, uh, representation of the price. So it can't anticipate the price, it only shows for what it has been done. And uh, indicators means to indicate. So it's only an indication. So tonight we're going to review uh, the most used, let's say, indicators. And each of them will indicate something very specific. You will be able to use either all the indicators combined or only one indicator. Doesn't matter. Everybody is different. On my side, I'm using only one uh, indicator. It's the Bollinger Band. Ah, we're going to see it. Bollinger Band. And that's all. And I'm basically using none, or yeah. one or two very rarely. So usually when, when a trader doesn't use any indicators, we say that he's a price action trader. And there is, a, there is a, if you go to some forum, there is a, a big cliche. So usually people who are using indicators are presented as a very stupid person, very beginners that doesn't understand anything about markets because they need an indicator to understand the market. While uh, traders who are using only the price, so price action, they are uh, like high-end uh, traders and so on. Again, remember, nobody is right, nobody is wrong. You only have to use what is uh, helpful for you. And to most of my students, I always tell them, if you need to use an indicator at the beginning, then you can do it. You have to consider an indicator as a, a launch. Uh, you know, when you, when you launch a rocket in the space, you are using a launch... Uh, launch pad. Exactly. So some indicators might be a launch pad. So if you are a true beginner and you really think that indicators might help you to see better the chart, then use them. But then gain experience, and you're going to see that in a moment, you will not need actually indicators. And another thing, if you remember the first time we met, I told you that 20% of the information is important. 80% is uh, just uh, redundant. You know, it's always the same. It goes the same with indicators. If you start to use a lot of indicators, you're going to see that most of them tell you always either the same thing or an opposite thing. So sometimes an indicator tell you that it's better to sell, another time, uh, and another indicator tell you it's better to, to, to buy. So don't overcomplicate again your charts, and, and that's all. Uh, again, our sponsor is Admiral Market, so a broker which provides CFDs in several markets, such as Forex, uh, some stocks, uh, indexes, and cryptocurrencies as well. And uh, what I like is that they have uh, Australian uh, jurisdiction, so you don't, uh, you don't have the limitation of the leverage, because as you know now in uh, Europe, uh, we can't use a lot of leverage. And for the one who doesn't know what is a leverage, it will be the uh, lesson of two weeks, I think. And uh, Jarvis, which is a multi-asset exchange where you will be able to trade forex, stocks, cryptocurrencies, whatever actually exists, from one single wallet. Okay, so uh, we are here, indicators and patterns of indicators. And I think uh, you're gonna start. I will tell you a bit more about uh, the indicators. First, I want to thank you all for coming, especially in this weather. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, what an indicator is, it is just uh, the most basic explanation. It is just a mathematical formula which is visualized on your chart using lines or bars or other types of graphs, let's call them. Uh, the most important thing to know here is that there are two 
types of uh, indicators. There are two categories, main categories. So we have the lag lagging indicators and leading indicators. What's the difference between them? The lagging, lagging indicator usually gives you a signal or shows you that a move has started or a reversal has already started after it has started. So uh, the leading indicators are showing you uh, that the move, uh, they are basically showing you that a certain move or a reversal will start before it has started. Uh, although that sounds like magical and most of you probably will say, okay, so why don't I just use leading indicators and just predict the market using them? They don't work like that. I mean, many, in many cases, they actually give you uh, sort of a false information. They don't give you information when this move is going to start. So they can tell you that a move is expected, but this move can start in a week or in a month or whatever. So uh, what I want to add here is to never use, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, to never use uh, as an indicator as a signal, as a single signal to enter. Always use uh, some other tools, for example, uh, candle formation, support and resistance, or something else we talked about last time, and add an indicator to confirm uh, that reversal or that uh, trend continuation. And then you can uh, continue with the uh, technique of entering onto the market, which we will talk about on our next presentation. So now I want to show you a graph of a lead lagging indicator first. So this is the indicator line. And this is the price line. You can see a uh, difference. And you can see the areas where the indicator showed the reversal. But the reversal actually already started, and we are already like in the middle of it. So this is how lagging indicators work. You can see we have a few other examples here and here. Again, we had a downtrend in this case. A reversal, uh, the indicator showed that a reversal is happening, but it has already started. So sometimes uh, the signal will be good because the indicator will show the reversal at the beginning of the reversal, but sometimes it will show it like in this case or even in this case, like in the middle of the uh, already happening reversal, which is kind of too late to jump in. Now regarding the leading indicator, Again, we have an indicator line, a price line, and here you can see, again, the differences. First here, you can see that the indicator is showing that a reversal is expected in this case, and it happens, uh, but when the indicator shows that the reversal will happen, we are actually still uh, in the uptrend before the reversal happens. Here is another example and another one. So you need to understand that both uh, categories of indicators, lagging and leading, have their uh, pros and cons. And you should, if you are using an indicator, you should uh, know a lot of things about it, how it works to, uh, let's say, model it uh, according to your trading, your method of trading, because indicators have uh, parameters which you can add. Uh, We're going to talk about them in a bit. Uh, and uh, that's it. Doesn't matter which one you choose, either lagging or leading indicator. Always choose the one that works for you, the one that you understand, and the one that you have tested with your strategy and uh, has promised some good results. Uh, now, all those indicators that exist, as there are thousands of indicators and they keep on popping, since it's not like extremely hard to make an indicator, you just need to be good at math, uh, can also be uh, separated in four subcategories. So first, we have trend indicators. Those type of indicators are used by traders to define the current state of the market. Either we have an uptrend, downtrend, or a range. We talked about that last time. The second type is the momentum indicators. Uh, as you can see, they are used to measure the moving speed of uh, the market at a given time frame. 
Then we have volatility indicators. Now, I just want to add here that volatility is uh, extremely important for traders as it, uh, when you have a higher volatility on a market, it presents better opportunities for uh, higher profits. And when the volatility is low, it's kind of hard to find a good spot to enter. Like, I don't know if you have uh, checked the markets in the past few days, but the euro is basically standing still for, from the beginning of the weekend. It's not giving any good signals where it will go next. Uh, volatility indicators can be used uh, not only to define uh, the current volatility on the market, but also to give you sort of a signal. Uh, I should warn you here that you should use uh, volatility indicators uh, carefully because, for example, if you have uh, very strong volatility on the market, uh, it is quite dangerous, so you should um, you should use a risk management and money management strategy uh, in that way that it is good for a more dangerous market where you could win a lot, but you could also lose a lot. And on a lower volatility market, you know, you can uh, maybe jump things up, use a little bit more investment, a little bit, uh, um, how to say it, more trades to open, but we are gonna talk about those things uh, on our next, and actually the last presentation is about uh, risk management. And the last subcategory is the volume indicators. They are, sh they are showing you the current volume on the market and again, they can be, uh, they can give you a sign of a potential reversal or of a trend continuation and so on. Now, today we are going to start first with the moving average as uh, I believe the moving average is in the center of most indicators used, especially the more uh, famous ones. So what is a moving average? Basically, it's just a line that connects some dots. Those dots can be uh, different. The moving average has two parameters. The first one is basically where you want the dot to be. So it can be the closing price of a candle, it can be the opening price of a candle, it can be the high uh, of the candle or the lowest point of a candle. So here we have sort of a trend, let's say. Uh, and in this case, uh, we are using the close of the candle as um, a parameter for our simple moving average. Of course, moving averages can be used on more uh, candles than just one, uh, but this is the second parameter. I'll talk about it in a bit. So we take all the closing prices of each candle we talked about the candle structure last time. And we connect them with a line. This is the moving average, basically. The most simple moving average, of course. There are a lot of variation of the moving average, like exponential moving average, etc. cetera. But uh, if I use moving average, I prefer to use the simple one as uh, the other ones are just making your trading more complex than it has to be. Trading should be easy. Regarding the period parameter of the moving average, uh, this is something you can change depending on your trading technique, on your preference, and so on. So you can uh, make a movi moving average take a different period. A period is basically a set of candles. So if you set the uh, period of a moving average uh, to two equal three, it will take three candles, so for example, uh, you choose the closing price as a first parameter, then you choose uh, three candles, three period moving average. So it will take the closing price of three candles, it will create an average of those three uh, prices, and there it will be the first dot of the whole line. So in this case, it's taking, as I said, the closes of the candle, creates a dot. N next three candles takes the closings, makes a dot and so on. You've got the point here. And you connect the dots. Now moving average uh, is mainly used uh, to define a trend, but if you go over the internet, there are a few strategies uh, that rely only on moving averages. I'm going to cover two of them. Uh, one of them which I 
actually like. I don't use as a main strategy, but sometimes uh, it gives uh, pretty good results. But first, uh, Pascal will tell you a bit about the moving average. Okay, so additionally, in, in moving average, you have average, so you have to understand that it's the average price. So as example, this point shows the average price of the 10 or 20 last uh, candles, so the 20 or 10 or 20 last uh, prices. And what you can see here, as you can, you, you can see the price, which is very, what we call noisy, you know, it's going up, it's going down, it's, it's quite complicated to read. But as soon as you apply the moving average, it looks like that things become uh, more clear. I mean, you have to be uh, blind to don't see that when it's green, it's going up, and when it's red, it's going down. So the first use of, so of a moving average is basically to smooth the price, so to make the price more readable. A lot of people use moving average for different purposes. The first one, as example, is uh, the side. So last time, we explained you what was the trend. So if you forget everything about what we said last time about uh, the theory of Do, and you just want to use a moving average to determine the trend, so maybe you will say that every time the price is above the moving average or every time the price is below the moving average, then you have a downtrend or then you have an uptrend. So now you don't need any more of these things about theory of dough or all the complicated things that we have seen last time. Just use moving average and that's all. Uh, another uh, usage of the moving average is the position. So some analysts, they analyze the uh, angle that the moving average is doing. So as example, sometimes you can see that the moving average is almost flat. You have here, you have it here. So it means that the market is almost looking for a, a movement. And sometimes the moving average has a very strong angle. So it means that the market knows in which direction. And it's pretty logic since the moving average is an, uh, the average of uh, the last prices. And then you have the crosses. So every time the price cross the moving average, so every time we change from red to green, some analysts use this as a, a signal which says, okay, now we have changed the trend. So basically we go from a downtrend to an uptrend, from an uptrend to a downtrend, and so on and so on and so on. It doesn't mean that you have to use it this way. This is a very simple and basic thing, and we're gonna cover, of course, more, uh, I mean, smarter way uh, to use it. I just uh, want to add here that that's why I told you you shouldn't use uh, indicators as uh, sole signal because, for example, right here we have a change. Uh, it's turning from red to green, meaning that we are up for an uptrend, but actually the uptrend doesn't happen. So sometimes it gives you bad signal, sometimes it gives you good. You have to use more methods to confirm uh, what you can expect. Here you have uh, three kind of different moving average. So we won't go into detail because it's not interesting for most of you. But when you calculate uh, an average, how do you do? Like if I want to calculate the average between you three, I will just uh, take your note, your note, your note, and I will divide by three. This is called a simple average. But maybe sometimes I want to put uh, a coefficient so to put more weight on you, as example, because maybe you are more important than the two other. So maybe your notes, I will multiply it by three, your by one, and your, I will divide it by two. And then when I will make the average, I will not divide by three, but I will divide by six. So this is what we call a weighted average. So as example, the simple, if I remember, should be the blue, the weighted should be the pink, and then we have the exponential one. So it's the same system. We put a weight on the, uh, one of the parameters, but uh, it has an exponential value. So as example, if I want to calculate, maybe it was a moving average of uh, 20 candles. So this point, it's the average price of the last one, two, three, four, eight, 20 candles. So if I make the average, simple average, I, 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 I end up with this. Weighted average is this, and exponential average is that. As you see, you have the same signal. I mean, there is really, really a tiny difference between the averages. But again, when you go to some forum, you will see people who are crazy about the exponential average, and they will tell you all the other average are bullshit and doesn't work. Other people will speak about uh, other kind of averages. Actually, there is maybe 10 different averages uh, that 
you can Google it if you want. You have the average of whole, you have the triangular average, you have the endpoint average, you have the exponential, the simple. I mean, all of this again is bullshit. But uh, I just wanted to show in this chart that, as you see, it, it, it shows exactly the same thing. Then, uh, Ilian told you that there is one parameter, it's uh, the period. Because what you have to understand is that when you want to use a moving average, you can use, uh, you can decide, sorry, uh, which parameters to use. So you can use uh, exponential, simple, weighted. So this is what we call the method of calcul. But you can also uh, choose well, the color, and you can also choose uh, which, what is the period of the calculation. So it means that you can add multiple moving average. So here we have one moving average which is calculated maybe on 100 candles. Another one in the middle calculated on 50 candles. Another one calculated on 25 candles. It's example. Uh, so the question is, okay, so which parameter we have to use? Should I use 20 or 21? Should I use 100 or 200? Should I use 500 or 502? So there is absolutely no rules. There is not a parameter which is better than the other one. But there is different way to choose the period that you want to use. So the first one is called logical. This is a one hour time frame chart. If you remember what we have said last time, it means that each candle represents one hour of variation. So the first candle, uh, the first average, it's this one. So it's blue, but they are all blue, but uh, trust me, it's different kind of blue. So this one, as an example, it's uh, a 12. Why? Because it represents the variation of the 12 last hours. Why 12? Because it's logical. We are human and we uh, work on a 24 hours a day. So 12 hours for a market is just what happened during the last half of the day. So it can represent a good average because basically this point represents the average price of the last 12 hours. This one, uh, I don't remember exactly how much, but maybe it's like three days. So this average represents the uh, uh, average price, or maybe it's 24, it says 24. So this price, rep this average represents the average price of the last 24 hours. And this one maybe represents the average of the last three days. So you can decide to use the moving average using a logical parameter, so we call it a, a logical period. Uh, the next one is called empirical. So as it stands for, empirical, means by experience. So as you can see, Ilian will explain you after a different choose of moving average, this one works super good because look, when the price is below the moving average, you have a, a very good downtrend and it looks like that the price every time rejects, uh, the moving average, sorry, rejects the price. So it looks like there is something magical with this moving average and it works pretty good because here we clearly saw the downtrend, the uptrend, then a downtrend. So this moving average has been chosen in an empirical way. It means that uh, we just applied a moving average on the chart and then we change the parameter until we find the parameter that works good. Why? <coughs> because market works with cycle. So sometimes this parameter, maybe it's 146, is working perfectly and will work for maybe a few weeks until the moment it will stop working or to give a very clear signal. So when we look at this chart, what we can say is that uh, this was pr a pretty good uh, moving average because when it has been broken uh, uh, by, the, I mean, by, by the down, let's say, after we had a very, good, a very big downtrend. So maybe the market has this kind of cycle or, or this kind of um, uh, how to say, uh, not cycle, but uh, frequency. Uh, and the other uh, one, it's, uh, it's yours actually. Uh, so there is some magical number. Uh, don't tell me how they come. You know, humans, they are always uh, completely crazy. They create uh, religion, they create uh, uh, beliefs. And traders have a lot of beliefs. Actually, traders are one of the most, uh, how we call it, people who believe in stupid things. Yes, super serious people in the world. I mean, they, I, I have met traders that think that if it's raining, then they will trade better. I mean, they are totally stupid. So, so stupid traders, uh, they think that, uh, sorry, I don't say stupid, but, 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 but some moving average has a power. And because 
stupid others are millions in the world, then it becomes real. Because if you have 500 persons who are using exactly the same tool, then finally this tool becomes real. So this is the funny thing. Someone one day said, oh, 200 is a great number. So a lot of people start to say, yeah, if you use a 200, you're going to see, you're going to win, and it, it will work. So people start to use it, and finally, it works. And this is why the 200 is one of the best uh, moving average. Yeah, it uh, stood um, against time and survived, basically. I uh, use the 200 moving average from time to time, as I am not uh, extremely fond in using indicators, but they can be helpful in many cases. However, uh, so the 200 moving average is basically just a moving average that has a period of 200. So it takes the last 200 candles in order to uh, make the average of them. Why it, it works? As Pascal said, many traders start to believe uh, in something and if they are more than enough, then it starts to work. Uh, I've gone back on a lot of currency pairs and also other markets actually, not uh, only the Forex market. And I can notice that the 200 moving average actually works. Not always, of course, as everything, but in many cases it works. So, uh, for example, here we had a square or a range. We talked about that last time. Then the Dow trend started. And you can see that uh, the moving average didn't do anything here. The price just went through it. But sometimes uh, this exact moving average is working either as a support or resistance. After the uh, downtrend was completely confirmed, moving below the moving average, which is the logical thing, uh, it retraced back to it and you can see what the reaction was. Actually, this is the uh, H4 uh, chart of euro dollar. So each candle represents four hours of price movement. Then again here, uh, although as you can see, it didn't exactly touch the moving average, and on the third uh, example, it actually went a little bit above it and then retraced back below it. Uh, last time, if you remember, we told you that uh, support and resistance levels are not actually levels, but they are more areas. So even here, we can consider the moving average as an area, not just a simple line. So this can also be counted as a bounce and also this, although it went a bit above it. Uh, on this, if I can make a comment, there is a, a trader, a woman, uh, Indian woman, she's called uh, Ragi Horner. And uh, to do this, the uh, area, she's using three moving average. So one calculated on the close of each candle, so it's the middle one. Then she's using one, the same, but calculated on the high of each candle. So it's exactly, or almost exactly the same moving average, but a bit higher, so it goes there. And then one calculated on the uh, uh, lowest point. So you have three moving average that uh, uh, form like, like a resistance or a support. And she's using, uh, uh, not 200, but 34. And uh, you're gonna see why 34 after uh, with you. Uh, I also want to add here that um, although it seems as a good uh, sino indication, the moving average, it should be used either with another uh, sino of confirmation that this bounce is ac actually legitimate, or if you want to use only one indicator, doesn't matter if it's the 200 moving average, you should uh, have a very, very good risk and money management strategy. If you have an extremely good money management and risk strategy, you can use only one indicator. It's not a problem because when you are losing, you will be losing uh, a lot less than when you are winning. So at the end, you can turn into profit. Now another example of the Just moving average. Yeah, can, can you go uh, yeah, I can return. And remember last time we told you that it's important to always know what is, uh, I mean, when a trend starts, when a trend finish. So as example, you can use this moving average just as an indicator of uh, when the trend could stop. So as example, if you, if you try to see a, a channel here, an uptrend channel, and you don't know, of course, what will happen here, but you already know where is your moving average. And you know the 200 moving average doesn't move a lot. 
because you have calculated 200 candles. So you, you, you know when you are uh, exactly here, you know that the moving average when we will be here will almost be in this area. So you can already anticipate and to say, okay, so if the uptrend keep going, there is a possibility that it might stop around this. So this is one of the role of the uh, uh, analyst, remember. The analyst is supposed to map and to, to, to try to say when the uptrend could stop and when also a downtrend might start. So it can be also used for that. And you used the word possibility. So I cannot hear that trading is all about uh, possibilities. We work with possibilities. And when the possibility becomes a reality, you should know how to handle that and maximize uh, the profits from that and or minimize the losses if you're mistaken. Uh, again, that will be the topic of our final presentation.